Hi guys, welcome to the Salty Strikes Fish channel. I'm Chris and uh, I'm here out on my Rebolo R200 and I've been getting a lot of uh, requests to do a review. I did a review uh, about a year and a half ago and I've owned the boat for a while now and I've given, I've, people have been asking for updates and you know, I've done a lot of special things, you know, just to make it my own uh, on this boat. So we're gonna go over those few things and I get asked the same questions quite a bit. So I'm gonna go over the top five at the end of this after we do our little walkthrough. Uh, top five questions I get and I'll answer them all. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, go through and uh, just talk about all the little mods I've done um, and uh, just share a little bit about uh, how that's affected the, you know, the fishability of this boat and uh, uh, how much I like it. So we're gonna start from the back and work our way to the front. Um, and uh, to begin with, uh, we got the um, jack plate back here. It is an Atlas. Um, and it's got like a six inch setback. And uh, it uh, has been vital, like in shallow water areas. Oh my goodness, there's a tarpon right over there. Hold on. I'm just gonna leave that back there while we do a little chat. Um, <laughs> I can't help it, I'm like, uh, the dog from up. I may talk, squirrel. Anyway, this this uh, jack plate's been vital. Uh, we uh, when we ever fish like shallow waters or where we're going up on shore, to be able to like back up or or go in those areas without tearing up the the grass and everything is kind of important because you need that grass for the um, you know the bait fish to live in, and then that's what causes the you know the um, predator fish to show up so uh the like when we fish the flats in like sanibel island area southwest florida it, like you, you just can't get around that with a boat like this without having uh, a jack plate or something like that because you constantly would be having to trim up your motor and then you can't control it with it trimmed up that high and the closer you get to the, the propeller gets to the surface of the water uh, the more air it's going to suck in and it's just it, you're not going to be able to move so um, I would definitely highly recommend that the next thing I like to mention is we've kind of added a couple of rod holders here I know I got a little bit of rust here I think uh, these screws were not uh, 316 stainless they're probably like three or four a little cheap and uh, added some here and a couple more you can never have enough rod holders or actually yeah this one here you can never have enough rod holders in a boat, uh, especially if you really enjoy fishing. So, you know, I'd highly recommend just uh, investing in some because, you, you know, you have to set your rod somewhere. A lot of times when you're helping somebody else or, or if you have two lines out, you know, it's good to have options. The next thing I would suggest is, uh, you know, the leaning post that it comes with it eats up a lot of space back here. It used to be right back here in the rod holder seat and that and I'd have to squeeze back and forth quite a bit. So I replaced it um, with this uh, flip back seat and it's got a you know cooler inside and then I just all around it I uh, put uh, tackle uh, web bags and you know lots of great storage. So and most of the time I'm fishing current and I'm facing this direction. So it has, it's nice to have somewhere to sit because the only other seats are over here and you're facing this way or if you sit on the gunnels, which is, you know, nice and convenient too. But, you know, and, but right here I'm under the shade and everything. So it, with this big T-top, so, uh, you know, this is a, a great asset. Another custom job I did myself is this uh, electric box up here. Doesn't have any electric things in it except for like my drone I usually store it up in there when I'm underway uh, but that's the, that's the main reason why I got it because I needed somewhere to keep that thing dry especially if it started raining um, but I just made it out of starboard and you know it's kind of filthy right now I need to clean it up but you know I just put a sheet up here made a box and uh, put a couple hinges and a latch and there you go it was probably like maybe 120 bucks for with all the starboard and all the stainless steel hardware and screws so i'm like that's not pretty bad and maybe two hours worth of work if you can cut a straight line you can make one of these so you know don't hesitate to try 
another thing that I did custom in here too is I replaced all the uh, the gunnel rod holders uh, with PVC that go all the way through. Um, you see back here, like the ones that they that Rebalo has that it comes with it, are these just you know plastic like little inserts that they fall off and then uh, where the rod sticks through is just f a fiberglass. Uh, brace you know in there and they just drilled a hole through it there's fiberglass all hanging out from it and everything and you're trying to stick your rod in there and it's jamming up and i broke lines and it's it, it was awful I, i'm pretty sure like a lot of my you know my line has was wearing from riding in there on that fiberglass and everything and i broke off on quite a few fish and i've noticed i've i've got less line breaks from storing it with these, these things um that is definitely upgrade i don't i don't know why they wouldn't just do this to begin with. I don't know, twenty dollars for PVC and the little two-inch drain uh, just glued on. Those were I don't know, two or three dollars a piece. So it was definitely worth it. And up top here, I got the uh, tea bag. I've got four Type One life vests because I, you know, charter now. You have to have a Type One life vest for every person on board. Um, I got four in there, and if I if I have four people on and I need one for myself, I throw an extra one down here in the head. Um, but, you know, tea bag keeps, keeps things up out of the way. It's cheap, I don't know, 60 bucks, something like that. So, you know, it's worth getting one of these. And while I'm here, uh, we'll talk about these. You know, everybody asks about these little clips. You know, I'll, I'll link all, all these things that I that you can uh, purchase on Amazon uh, down below. But, uh, you know, put these clips here to, for the uh, net and for my gaff. And um, we'll just go over the head here real quick. You know, we got, got the head down there. I got the, my single lithium ion battery down below. 36 volt for my trolling motor. And um, I'll put the shelf in here. The easiest way to make this shelf is to just uh, take a piece of cardboard and stick it in there and, and draw, you know, um, cut it the way you need to. Then take it on a piece of starboard, slide it in there. And I didn't screw this on right here. I just got it zip tied, cut some holes through. So it's pretty easy to remove if I need to. But I got tackle webs here and there. Lots of, you know, good storage space. Um, another thing I get a lot of questions about is uh, this uh, little hatch right here. This does not come with your Rebalo, but there is a ton of wasted space down there. It, it goes all the way down the bottom, about two or three feet deep. And you can put uh, fenders or like a, a, a go bag or whatever I have my go bag down there and a couple fenders and that's it saves a lot of space because you know this is, it's not a huge boat so space is kind of important and uh, most of you guys have already uh, aware of the last the review video I did um, you know I, I shared uh, about the anchor situation up here got 11 pound Bruce anchor with 15 feet of chain uh, 3 8 uh, stainless steel chain because when before I got the trolling motor uh, you know we had the current is really strong here um, in Ponce Inlet and uh, if you don't have if you're not anchored good you'll start dragging uh, so we got tired of that and almost running into the bridge or docks and stuff like that so we got a pretty stout system so that when we drop we know it's going to grab and hold and hold fast so I added a, a cleat here for when i put that out i tied the line up right here so it's a little more convenient and the last review video i didn't even have a trolling motor and i've since then had a motor guide xi5 and i put her made a review and uh i didn't do an install on that one but the motor died on us so i had to replace it and um you know marine parts of stuff are hard to get so i couldn't replace it with an xi5 so i got a Makota uh tarova and i have a whole nother video on how to install this i get a lot of questions about this aluminum plate and stuff and all that's answered on that video i'll link that below too um, if you want to see how we put that on and um, get that all set up now to go over just a couple little complaints i have about Rebalo is uh these uh cushions um, they've stained real easily and got mildew on them. It's been hard as heck to get off of them. You know, we tried bleaching and all kinds of other stuff. If you'll notice in the front here, uh, we've got all the cushions are gone. We don't even use them anymore. Uh, they, you know, they're kind of pointless. They got dirty and filthy and nasty, and we just cannot keep them clean. Um, I know my wife's been looking on the, you know, the Facebook page and stuff like that. I guess a lot of people have been having issues with that. Um, but we really don't, you know, lounge around up here much. 
you know we do a lot of fishing so they're not really that important to us so we just got rid of them so we don't have to keep them clean um one of these covers did fall off and it does not want to stay back on i'll find a new way to secure that for that speaker uh that's a issue i've had not not a huge thing but there are a few things that uh um I do have a little bit of complaints about just like little things like these screws these are screwed in these are not uh, bolts and same thing with the um, like the seats and stuff these uh, uh, are screws not bolted down so they they come they come loose occasionally and um, you have to go back and tighten them down a little bit uh, those are really the only places that I've had issue with that but you know small things if you have any questions about anything I've kind of gone over here, uh, just leave them in the comment section below and I usually get to them. So, um, you know, just leave them down there and we'll take care of you. All right, guys, now we're going to get to top five questions I get about this R200. Um, it is powered by Yamaha uh, 150 and the coming in at number five is how fast does this thing go? All right, well, if it's completely calm and I got the wind at my back, I can go about 42 miles an hour and uh people ask if uh adding the the jack plate um influenced the speed at all i can i don't think there's a real big difference maybe a mile one mile per hour loss if that so that's full throttle 5500 rpms you know when it my back uh completely calm 42 miles an hour is top and i don't really care to go much faster than that in this boat Number four, what kind of fuel economy do I get in this thing? Um, going about 3,000 RPMs, I'm doing about 10 gallons uh, an hour, uh, and about, um, I think a 5,500 RPMs, which is about max, um, I'm sucking down about 16 and a half uh, gallons per hour. Honestly, that's that's what I kind of go by. I'm like, um, if I take a half hour out, and I'm sucking down 16.5, you know gallons an hour i know i've gone through about uh, a little over eight gallons in a half hour well number three what would be my first upgrade trolling motor definitely trolling motor if you're a fisherman get a trolling motor throw an anchor especially offshore and everything and dragging it up and down and even inshore man it, it's just it saves you so much trouble get a trolling motor get one uh don't get as much power as you need get more power um better to have more than not enough especially if the current starts whipping or the wind uh, you want something to hold you in place and you want a good battery system that's going to take care of you too um, and i'm going to do a review of the uh, xi5 and the uh, Minn Kota, uh later so i'll give her you know talk about the ups and downs about those so look forward to those in the future all right coming in at number two uh, how far can i take this boat offshore I get asked that a lot and uh, it will go until it runs out of gas that's the simple answer the difficult answer is it all depends on your comfortability uh, when you get out there and you got to remember you know if you go you know 30 miles out and um, you know you're going at 30 miles an hour and it's pretty calm it took you an hour to get out there let's say that the, the weather picks up it gets choppy and you can only go 15 back it's going to take you two hours to get back so you just got to factor that in uh you know it, it will cut through small chop pretty good uh but anything over like two foot waves at more than like 10 second intervals um it, it'll slow you down quite a bit uh i really pick my days when i go offshore it's not a, just any weather kind of boat offshore it is only like just uh just under 21 feet long and it's about eight foot wide it's got an 18 degree dead rise uh, which is you know moderate uh, so you know it, it, it does get me out there um, I take it offshore all the time I think the farthest I've ever gone offshore is about 25 miles I've never really cared to go farther than that but like I said it'll it'll go till you run out of gas it's all about your comfortability I always suggest having an EPIRB I suggest having a, a handheld radio you know not just the one that's in your uh, console because like if your boat goes down your radio goes with it so you, you know if you do have one in your console I'll always have a backup radio too so it's uh, just you know you got to mind the weather uh, you, you gotta know what you're comfortable with and uh, don't push it all right and the number one question I get 
is would I buy another Rebalo and or like R200 and the answer is yes and no um, when we bought this thing uh, we Kim didn't fish and I was the only one that fished and so she hung out on the front which you know it's it's kind of like a reverse mullet it's party in the front business in the back you know we do all our fishing doing all my fishing back here and she would just hang out and chill out in the front and then she started fishing and it became just once she got hooked it became just a fishing boat um that's what we do and we don't really lounge around anymore we come out and we fish um especially if you want to subscribe and uh follow along on our fishing adventures you know we'd appreciate it and uh you know glad to have you but so um yeah it's a good boat it's solid it's a good sturdy boat um you know there are those little finishing things like using screws where they probably should have used bolts uh the the upholstery they could have done a little bit better job with that but you know some of that's just nitpicking um but for the for the price it's a good solid boat i would definitely get that again for what i'm getting but if i was to get another boat i would get something that's more just fishable like uh i don't need that bow seating um i actually i just need you know more just open cockpits and it'd be nice if like some of the stores and icebox were in the floors be a little easier uh for fishability reasons so you know i, I would get one again um but for what i want to do i probably would get a different boat like a reef runner 23 open um is probably the boat that we're looking at next to getting it's all open and it's more fishable that's about it and with a little bit bigger boat a little more open area it'd be i could fit a couple more people on here more comfortably for fishing and you know less line tangles and you know just because you know we're fishermen and that's what we do uh we don't hang out at the sandbar really we take lily out there to run around but that's about it um so that's gonna wrap things up thanks for sticking around for that uh review i uh, hope you found it useful and if you have any questions leave in the you know comment section below and if you haven't subscribed yet uh, click subscribe and watch all our fishing adventures and uh, so we see you next time guys stay salty